First of all, that looks beautiful. <laughs> Nothing in all the world is more dangerous than sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. Nothing in the world is more dangerous than sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. Martin Luther King Jr. So, let's get into the word today. I need you to lean in today. This is part one. It probably at least, at least three, four parts to this. But I need you to lean in because this can change your life if you lean in. When I say, when I mean lean in, of course we do physically, but I mean, g g give me your ear. Give me, give me your mind. Give me your heart. Not me, but the God through me. Are y'all following me? So we can learn. Because what happens a lot of times in church, in church, okay, but not when you come to worship and learn. But in church a lot of times, you go, you know, then what happens, we just get to praise and worship. We hear the preacher and we are really trying to rush she or he to, to get to excitement so we can get excited and then go home. Which does not bring proper change. Today... I want to talk, my message is, starting today, a new series called, The Greatest Enemy of Man. The Greatest Enemy of Man. Let's go to the scriptures. I'm going to read uh, uh, John the 8th chapter, verse 31 through 38, Passion Virgin. So we're going to read all of that, get some context. The Greatest Enemy of Man. You want to know that. The Bible says in the Gospel of John, John's not part of the synoptic gospel, it's a little different. Talks about the, div the divinity of God. Okay? John 8 and 30, beginning at verse 31 says, Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, when you continue to embrace all that I teach, you prove that you are my true followers or disciples. For if you embrace the truth, it will release true freedom into your lives. Verse 33. Surprised by this, they said, but we are, we, are, we are the descendants of Abraham, and we are already free. We've never been in bondage to anyone. How could you say that we will be released into more freedom? Verse 34, I speak eternal truth, Jesus said. When you sin, you are not free. You become a slave in the bondage of your sin. And slaves have no permanent standing in a family like a son does. For a slave is a part of the family forever. For a son, excuse me, is a part of the family forever. If the son sets you free from sin, then become a true son and be unquestionably free. Oh. Even though you are descendants of Abraham, you desire to kill me. Mm, because the message that I bring has not found a home in your hearts. Mm, think about that. Yet the truths that I speak, I've seen and received in my father's presence. But you are doing what you learn from your father. Now, Jesus is talking about the, their father was the devil. Now, I'm going to read verse 32 again. For if you embrace the truth, it will release true freedom into your lives. King James said, know the truth and the truth shall make you what? Free. If you, if, 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 two letter word, but a long, long word. If you embrace truth, it will release true freedom. The greatest enemy in the world is not per se the devil. The greatest enemy in the world is the absence of truth, ignorance. Mm. The greatest enemy in the world is not, per se, the devil. The greatest enemy in the world is the absence of truth, ignorance. See, when you ignorant of who you are in God, you fall short and let the devil tell you what you can and cannot do. When, you're ignorant, when, when you don't know the truth, you don't even worship to the death you can worship. You're, you, you, your understanding is not to the place it needs to be. Are y'all following me? Ignorance breeds a lot of negative things. It's not just not to know. We're going to break it down. I need y'all to lean in today. 
Because I got to teach this so you can get it. So you don't just get excited. Understanding truth and knowledge over ignorance from a biblical perspective involves acknowledging the truth, that truth is found in God. You got to acknowledge that truth is found where? God. Not just some book. But total truth is found in God. Now we, well, okay, I just wrote attitude determines attitude. Everything on the pages sh jumps off of truth. Even though even that book is, 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 is a book that corporate America can use. Because anything that's said outside of the truth of God is not true. It has no lasting power. Are y'all with me? Because God is the ultimate source of wisdom and understanding. He's the ultimate source of wisdom and understanding. Now, what is ignorance? Let's just, let's just get some definitions so we get on the same page. Ignorance is a... Hold on. Let me say this. Ignorance is not that you are dumb. Many times we call people ignorant trying to say they dumb. They're two different words. The definition of dumb and the definition of ignorance are two different things. Are y'all hearing me? I am, I'm going to give you a definition in a second. I am ignorant in many areas. Now, if you are a person that can't say you're ignorant in many areas, you are really ignorant. <laughs> you may be dumb. When it comes to medical things, I am ignorant. When it comes to other things of, of history and even, even some things and when it comes to uh, world history or black history or Latin history, I am ignorant in some areas. Are y'all following me? I'm learning every day. People send me things all the time. I'm like, wow, I didn't know that. Thank you for sending it. Are y'all following me? Ignorance is a lack of knowledge, understanding, education, or training in an area. It's a lack of knowledge, a lack of knowledge, a lack of understanding, a lack of educational training. So the Bible, that's what uh, Scripture said, in all you're getting, get what? Understanding. understanding. Get wisdom, but in all you're getting, get understanding. A whole lot of people getting a lot of things. They're getting purses and, and, and rings and cars. Let me, let me be careful. I'm not against purses, rings, and cars. Just was it, was it was, was in uh, Paris, or no, no, London, and bought my, not, my wife a new purse. <laughs> Won't tell you what it is, and then now I won what you think it is. Mm. <laughs> okay? I'm not against that. <laughs> right? I'm not against that. But I am against us gathering things and getting things and not getting understanding. We had a whole conversation that me and did last, uh, yesterday working uh, 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 about this. Ignorance can, uh, can appear in three different types. Y'all, y'all, somebody said, man, I thought I'd come to church. I ain't going to come to here. You learn nothing? That's the problem. We came to church. You don't, we don't come to church. We are the church. We come to worship. We are the church. Ignorance. Those who are watching um, uh, uh, online, ignorance can appear, appear in three different areas, okay? Three different types of ignorance. Number one, factual ignorance. Absence from the knowledge of a fact. Factual ignorance, okay? Absence from the knowledge of a fact. Second type of ignorance is object ignorance. Un your unacquaintance with some object. You're unacquainted with some object, object ignorance. ignorance. And the third type of ignorance is technical ignorance. Technical ignorance. Absence of the knowledge of how to do something. All right? So, so you have factual ignorance, don't know the facts, okay? Object uh, uh, ignorance, don't, uh, unacquainted with the uh, uh, object at hand. And then you have technical ignorance, the absence of knowledge to do something. Now, somebody may just tune in. They say, what are you talking about? We're talking about the greatest enemy of man. Tell your neighbor, the greatest enemy of man. The greatest enemy of man. No, no, no. Per se, not Satan. The absence of knowledge, truth, ignorance, all right? Now, in Hebrew, the Hebrew word for uh, ignorance uh, is uh, koshi. Say koshi. koshi. It, it, it literally means darkness, okay? Figuratively, you know, uh, destruction, death, ignorance. Sorrow, wickedness, dreadfulness, calamity. Because what happens is, when you become ignorant, calamity shows up in areas of your life. Are y'all following this? Now, we said that ignorance 
is the what? Absence of truth. What is truth? Truth is the quality of being true, genuine, factual, the actual thing. Now, truth. truth. Now, the, the Hebrew word truth comes from the, 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 uh, uh, the, the word truth comes from the Hebrew word emit, E-M-I-T, emit, or E-M-I-T-H, both of those you'll see. And it literally means the total truth. Are y'all with me? The total truth. Because sometimes you can have truth, but not the total truth. So when God, God is talking about, says somebody say the total truth. Total truth. God's talking about the total truth. Everything. Okay, everything. Now, uh, y'all see it with me? Yes, Get somebody a high five and then you make sure you see it with me. And the reason I'm doing this is because you have to train yourself to learn. Most people don't learn because they're not trained to learn. Especially in worship service. Because if you come out of a church that, that, that's African American, nothing wrong. Tell somebody he said nothing wrong. Our preachers always had a cadence to their preaching. Their cadence would allow us to keep the pace on a subconscious level. Sometimes more emotional than it was to learn. And when that cadence picked up, we got more excited. <laughs> okay, so so you got the so now when 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 teaching like this coming at you, you 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 got to train yourself to stay. <laughs> and what's are y'all y'all with me? I'm teaching while I'm teaching. So let's talk about knowledge, right? Because because the greatest enemy in the world, okay, is absence of knowledge, absence of truth. What is knowledge? Knowledge is the fact or condition of knowing something. With familiarity, gain through experience, association, or education. Ga okay, gain through what I say, experience, association, or what? See, that's why if you educated, stop telling up saying that people don't know. Right. Because you, you can gain knowledge through experience. I know some people who, who were so, I got an engineering degree, right, from a great school. When I first started GM, I won't call the name, there were several guys there that did not have engineering degrees, but they labeled them engineers. Absolutely. They could run circles around me. They had experience. They learned. Also, association. Hang around people of knowledge, some will rub off on you. Hang around dumb people, some are rough off on you. Hang around mad people, some are rough off. Hang around angry people, hang, hang around people of joy. I tell people, you hang around me, you'll get blessed by the overflow. You'll get blessed by the overflow, I'm telling you. And I ain't bragging, because I've hung around people and got blessed by the overflow. Experience, association, or? Education. So your experience don't knock the educated person. Right. That's right. Getting mad? No, no. And and if you and if you really want to be blessed, get experience, get association, and get education. And you'll be like Doc Rock. You can't stop a man like me. Because <laughs> that's how Jesus was. So, so let's, let's break this, this knowledge down because you got to get this. See, many of us have been conditioned to fall in love with entertainment instead of information. So when, 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 when Dr. Franklin, when Reverend Franklin was, was teaching and teaching great truth, everybody was just kind of, and, but when he got to his hoop party, everybody stood up. They should have been standing up when he first started teaching. But, but because we've been conditioned for, uh, for, for uh, entertainment from an emotional standpoint. We, we, we wait on the entertainment. Are y'all following me? We wait on entertainment instead of uh, waiting on the information. Tell somebody wait on the information. Tell somebody else wait on the information. Now, now when we talk about knowledge, let's, let's go to Genesis 1 and 3. I don't think I gave you the scripture. But in Genesis, let's hear me out. Genesis 1 and 3, um, um, God said, let there be what? Let there be what? Light. First day. Y'all follow me? Y'all tracking? Most people think he was talking about the sun and the moon then and stars. 
Read your Bible. God did not create the sun, the moon, and the stars to the fourth day. So, well, Dr. Trippin, I ain't God. Don't you? The first day, the word light there is or. O W R O H R. You'll find it both ways in Hebrew. Or. It literally means general sense of light. It means literally God's presence, his glory may manifest. It literally means the illumination of knowledge. God, oh, you may say, I ain't ready. On the first day, the first thing that God did was gave you knowledge. Oh, that's why the devil's always attacking you from gaining knowledge because he know that when you gain knowledge, then you got him. The greatest enemy of man is knowledge. Back during slavery times, don't let the slaves read. Don't let them learn. Why? Because if they do, they have a power. The greatest enemy of man is not the devil. The slave master didn't eat the devil. He just don't let them learn anything. And so, the, so now the system put in a book because they know you won't read it. Yeah. On the fourth day, the Hebrew word there, let there be light, is a derivative of or. It's ma'or, M-A-O-H-R, ma'or, okay, which means source of light. That word there is let there be light. God said let there be a source of light. Then it talks about the moon, the sun, the moon, okay, okay, and the stars. But the first thing God said, I need you to get some illumination of knowledge. I need to shine my glory so you can see who I am. So I tell people the power to define is the power to determine destiny. Because if somebody can define you and give and tell you who you are, then they can tell you where you can go and where you cannot go. Your greatest enemy is not the white man, the black man. Your greatest enemy is not, praise God, some person, some political party. Uh, praise God, is somebody down the, down the road, somebody that said something against you when you was in grade school. That's not your enemy. The greatest enemy of man is ignorance. Genesis 4 and 1, King James says... And Adam, I think you have that one. And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain. The word knew there, I got it up there, is yada. Yada means to know. It means to be know in an intimate way. Are y'all following me? She, Adam knew Eve, meaning that he, he became intimate with her, right? See, some people, some, they know you. They don't know you. <laughs> You don't know me, but you're going to get to know me. <laughs> Inside joke. You don't know me, but you're going to get to know me. Right? See, see, just because you know somebody's name don't mean you yada them. You, you may have an awareness of them. Y'all ready? Are y'all ready today? See, see, sometimes you can have awareness of a situation and awareness of a person but you don't know the person. Many people don't know God. They have an awareness of him. They may even be aware enough to go to heaven, but they're not aware enough to walk in victory on the earth. See, because when you know something, you, you birth children. Adam, Adam knew Eve. And she conceived. You can't know something and, con and conception and birth don't happen. If you know it, then that means you live in it. You may be aware. Not until fruit come from what you say, do you know. You don't know me, but you're going to get to know me. <laughs> Are y'all following me today? The greatest enemy of man I'm talking about. We're trying to Blame the devil. That old suit, that old devil. Man, the devil resting right now. 
Not really. He's still doing his thing. But he ain't got to do his thing on some of y'all. He already, he already put out the false lies that we believe. And, and we're not disciplined enough to learn. Now, I'm not talking about learning just from a mental standpoint. Not just on information. I'm talking about to know, being intimate. I'm talking about relationship. You can have head knowledge all day long. That means you know it. Maybe super aware. Now, the primary, y'all see with me? Now, the primary difference between wisdom and knowledge. How many of y'all are like, wisdom and knowledge? I mean, what's the difference? Well, wisdom involves, you know, like a healthy dose of a perspective or the ability to do what you know. The ability to make sound judgments about a subject matter. Knowledge is really just knowing. Get wisdom. But now you're getting, get what? I mean, understand what you're doing. Are y'all still with me? Can y'all put that uh, couple things up I want y'all to put up today? Yeah, you're in class. Hallelujah. All right, so here's where you want to be at. See, you can believe a thing, but it may be a lie. Your truth may be by, maybe just by accident. You justify, you know, something you believe, you know, for uncalled reason, but it, your justification may not be, you know, knowledge or whatever. Ignorance resides right here. See, because here's the deal. Ignorance resides in justification, okay, and outside of, out, and with, with a truth that may not even be true, right outside of belief. But here's where you want to be at. You want to be in the middle. Well, I'm knowledge. See, 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 your knowledge is based on truth. Uh -huh. Now, what truth am I talking about? God, Jesus Christ. Based on your belief in him, justified by Christ. Yeah. Oh, that's good. See, where, where's your justification? What justifies you? What, what says who and what says you can do and say what you do and say? Yeah. The blood covered me. I once was this. I once was lost. I once was a whatever. Now the blood justified me. Okay, I have his truth. I believe in him. Now I walk in knowledge. Yeah. Yada. Yeah. Most people do not operate here. Give me the next slide. Mm-hmm. Just a little color to you. This is where you want to live. In knowledge, justified by Christ, believing in Christ, understanding his word in your life. Most people live out over here. Well, let me live out here. Over here. It's just belief. But, but you don't have no truth of God. You ain't justified by Christ. Oh, I believe in myself. See, this, this is where humanism operates. You, you believe in you. See, whenever I te I'm teaching and I say believe in you, I'm talking about the God in you. Here's what I do, even when I'm speaking to a secular audience. Everywhere, I, everything I have, may not be y'all, it's from God. I'm just setting the precedence of truth and justification. Because you can believe a whole lot of things. But only what you do for Christ is going to last. See, that's why people with a bunch of education outside of justification of Christ can't walk in knowledge. They can walk in humanism, and they can be smart. They can be an Aristotle, Plato. Uh, okay, they can, they, can, they can be the Epicureans. Okay, they can walk like Nietzsche, okay, or, or Nebru, but they can't walk here in knowledge. Because true knowledge, are y'all hearing me? True knowledge, true truth, okay, it's based on the justification of Jesus, the truth of God, believing in who he is. Are y'all following me today? Uh huh. See, 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 I live like that. So I can make a demand on God for what he said. Not, not a demand on God from a humanistic, you better do it, God, but from God, you said it. Dun, 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 dun. Can y'all play that? Can y'all play that? Dun, dun, the man of your word. Dun, 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 dun. See, I'm a man of my word. Y'all remember that? All things up. Are... We always sing it three minutes ago, right? Y'all remember that? Man of my word. You, see, he's a man of his word. Do you believe it? You have his truth. Justified by Christ.
see, so when I was singing that song today, I knew I was going to be teaching. I'm like, oh my goodness, y'all own it. Hallelujah. Because he's a man of his word. Thank y'all. So if he can't, so, what well, bass sound good. So he can't, if he. <laughs> so if God cannot lie, because if God lied, it would be the truth. Because he's divine. Then what he said, I believe it at. Chris, I believe it. It has to come to <laughs> it has to come to pass. But if you are not operating in knowledge, you don't know what he said. See, coming to church praising God is not enough. You worshiping him, but the devil will have rough shove on you. The devil will beat you up. If you don't have knowledge, y'all still with me? Uh huh. Here's what he said in Hosea 4 and 6. Hosea 4 and 6, here's what he said. He said, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Since you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being my priest. Since you have forgotten the law of God, I will also forget your children. My people are what? Destroyed. Not by the devil. Greatest enemy in the world is ignorance. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. See, when you know who you are, can't nobody mess with you. They can knock you down, but you got resilience, bounce back power. Now, he says, since you have rejected me, I'm going to reject you as my priest. And by the way, also, I'm going to reject your kids. Y'all ready for this? That's why you see people who don't understand, from, even from a natural standpoint, their kids suffer. Because if you don't know, you don't know. From a spiritual standpoint, your kids suffer. See, that's why I'm like, I know people who come to church and don't bring their kids. Why would you come to church? Why would you come, praise God, to, uh, to, to worship service and not bring your kids? You think they're going to know by, by praying? No. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. You got to learn. Learn of me. Take my yoke. The, 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 symbolically, the yoke was Jesus' teaching. They yoked an old oxen to a young oxen to plow the field. And the, the, and the young oxen learned from the old, the old oxen because the old oxen knew the way. And they were yoked together. Jesus said, take on my yoke or take on my teaching. Learn of me. Are y'all with me? Learning takes discipline. So now, many of our kids are destroyed because the parents rejected knowledge. Now, if you reject the knowledge as a parent, don't walk in condemnation. Be convicted by God. Repent. Open yourselves up because God want to give you some more. And want to restore you and your family. Jesus wanted to restore you and your family. Are y'all with me? Boy, I can teach this all day. See, see, and our churches and our people are struggling and suffering because they think the enemy is their friend or the enemy is the devil. No, the enemy is your ignorance. You notice that from a secular point of view, from a royal point of view, you may have a PhD but not know how the, the how, the what, and, 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 and all about money. Because money's not taught in school. I teach you how to do a budget a little bit. I'm talking about money, how to invest money, how to multiply money, how to, how to value money for its place. Somebody say, well, I ain't no love money. Ooh, that's the root of all evil. The love of money, not money. The Bible said money answers all things. But when you were ignorant about that, you say, I don't know. Bible say, man, money, amen, is a root of all evil. Bible didn't say money was a root of all evil. The Bible never said money was the root of all evil. Never. 
The scripture said the love of money. Are y'all following me? And all your gifts and get what? So now, you, so now a lot of people don't have understanding of money, so when money shows up, we run from it because for so many years, we said subconsciously, we don't want that because it's the root of all evil, and I want to go to heaven. So subconsciously, it was working on you in the, in the background, messing you up to, to learn about money. But hey, no knowledge, destruction. So every time we get something new, we think that that money is there to buy something new. New money don't mean new things. But because of the void of teaching on money, we struggle. Tell somebody, struggle days are over. Tell somebody, we're going to learn. So, that's from a secular world point of view, which is true. That's true. Bring that to God. How many things we don't know? that's been freely given to us. Freely. By the blood of Jesus. We should be receiving them. We heard about it. But we don't know it. Yada. And we're not intimate. So you can come to church. You can praise God. You can feel happy. Oh, I'm happy, happy, happy. You'll be happy. But be miserable in the evening time. I've been there. I talk about me. Happy, feeling good, but had no joy. Because joy is not based on present circumstance. Joy is based on God. The joy of the Lord is your strength. It's not what you see, it's what you believe. But if no one ever taught you that, God offer you to smile every day and you frown because you don't know to smile. That's why I wrote a book called No Bad Days. Super Sunday, Marvelous Mummy, Terrific Tuesday, Wonderful Wednesday, Triumph on Thursday, Fantastic Friday, and Successful Saturday. Why? Because that's what God promised. Where he promised that at? This is the day that the Lord has made. I shall. Shall is a covenant word. Means it has to happen. Y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready. Y'all ain't ready. See, you fighting something that you should be fighting. You shadow boxing. You ain't hitting anything. Your fist ball, your arms moving, your wrist, your wrist is moving, but you're not hitting anything. And a lot of people shadow boxing. Church folks, shadow box. Because they are running from the truth. Now I ain't gonna ask you this. Yeah, I am. Don't 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 respond. Don't want you to lie in church. We lunch leaders, by the way. You ever thought about how easy it is to watch a movie? And how hard it is to read a scripture. How hard it is to, to listen to it. Now you can listen to the book. By the way, No Bad Days is on Audible. You, you just buy the book and, and, and we just read it right to you. Driving, ain't nothing wrong with that. Even that is hard. What? You can get the Bible on Audible. Most, matter of fact, most of your apps, just hit, hit it. And, and, and read the Bible to you. Maybe you'll suffer with reading a little bit. Or maybe you're just running. Read. Come on, listen to the Bible on the way to work. Why don't you do it? Because the devil going to fight you tooth and nail. And to keep you from being educated. To keep you from knowledge. 
Because when you find out who God is for real, y'all ain't saying nothing. It is said that God has 70 dimensions. 70 dimensions. You living in a three-dimensional fallen world. There's 67 more dimensions of God. You ain't saying You ain't even ready. That's why Peter could get out the boat and walk on water. That's not a fairy tale. That actually happened. Man can't walk on water with because man don't have buoyancy in the in, 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 the, in the three-dimensional world. But you go to another dimension, you can start walking on water. Y'all ain't ready. Now I did not say go to the Tennessee River. Don't do it. Unless you operate there. Those who watching don't, don't go to the ocean. Don't jump off the cruise ship. You in trouble unless you walk in there. <laughs> I just need to be clear. I need to be clear. But, but because you are walking with people who don't walk in knowledge, it sway you and keep you from going where you need to go. Are y'all following me? Uh-huh. Now, boy, I, this whole series is going to involve key points for you to understand truth and over knowledge. Then we're going to talk about how to defeat the enemy. I mean, I got like eight points to each one of them, eight different, so, yeah. But when we're done, if you don't embrace truth and knowledge, and some of you won't, <laughs> Paul said, oh, the foolishness of preaching. But I will say this, it's not going to be my fault. It's going to be yours. It's not going to be on me. Let's talk about amen. For point number one to you understanding truth, knowledge over ignorance. Let me just do that. Maybe two of them today. Number one, yeah, so I, that was just introduction. And I really, and I really didn't finish the introduction. I could go, got more. Are y'all following me? You, you, you got to realize how far behind you may be. We, we talk about like maybe Asian history. We talk about black history, you know, Hispanic history. We learn white history uh, in school. And, and, and all of them are half truths. None of them are truths. I'm going to say like that. I mean, I'm, you know, we grew up talking about Christopher Long and stuff in America. How can you discover something that people already here? And despite what we saw that uh, James 1619, that's when blacks came, we was already over here. Do your research. We already here. Oh, God, you know. Truth. So much of it out there. And so it's the lack of it. Hello. Uh-huh. Y'all quiet. <laughs> See, somebody can say you inferior when you don't know who you are. I still call them board teachers. So now you're looking down the ground. Because for years and years and years, your knowledge of you was that you was here. But I want to tell you, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're black, I don't care if you're brown, I don't care if you're yellow, I don't care if you're red, I don't care if you're a blue avatar. <laughs> you are fearfully and wonderfully made. That's, that's truth. That's knowledge. Fearfully and wonderfully made. So you're here. All right, number one is critical thinking. The first key point to understanding truth, uh, truth and knowledge over ignorance is critical thinking. I'm probably going to end with this because I'm going to be out of time in a second. You got to develop your critical thinking. Here's what scripture says. Scripture says, see, see, you think I'm going to say these points without backing them up. Oh, no. I'm going to back up everything I say with the word. Proverbs 14 and 15. Proverbs 14 and 15 says, the simple believes everything. I, the simple, meaning simple-minded, believes everything, but the prudent gives thought to his steps. See, see, critical thinking involves questioning assumptions, evaluating the evidence, and considering different perspectives before forming a conclusion. And so what happens is we can't walk any level of truth in God, not true knowledge, because we don't critically think. 
We are simple minded. I believe it. <laughs> if I tell you something without any kind of evidence or scripture, don't you believe that? Maybe my philosophy that may work every once in a while. A broke clock is, tr is, is, is right twice a day. <laughs> Just believe what I say, what some preachers say, because they they may not even study. Right. Oh, preachers are like, oh, doc, oh, don't do that, doc. No, no, you saying that because you don't want nobody to challenge you. Right. Challenge me on what I say. Yeah. Email me. Don't challenge me on Facebook. I don't play that. <laughs> Ignorant people do that. We can have a conversation in messenger or, or text, but no, 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 I'm not ignorant. I won't, I'm, no. <laughs> You've got to be a critical thinker. Amen. Don't just believe it. Show it to me. Where is it modeled? Who's modeling what you say? You ain't saying nothing. The Bible said love everybody. I love everybody. Body. That's my wife. There's not a person on this earth I hurt, I hate, and many people done some, done some bad things to me. I can't hate them. I've learned to love according to Scripture. Now, I ain't sound perfect. I got things I got to work out. I ain't loving Dr. A like I should. Got things, I ain't saying nothing. Got to keep growing. I hate no man, though. I've learned how to do that. God showed me. So, so what I'm trying to tell you is, challenge people. Don't be simple-minded. Next thing, I'm going to take five, five minutes, extra minutes, and, I'm, and uh, I want you to get it. Num number one is be, to be criti have critical thinking. Say critical thinking. <laughs> Stop believing everything people tell you, especially people who tell you stuff that they ignore themselves. Why you believe in somebody about money and they broke? How you gonna give me money advice and you don't have any? I mean, you have none. But you gonna tell me how to... Don't be simple-minded. You gonna tell me how to love, okay, um, in a marriage, and you've been divorced five times and still not married. And you have a, and you have a conference? Okay, let me, I'm, I'm, I'm getting ready to get in trouble. I'm getting ready to get in trouble. Some of y'all stop going to people conference because they got pastor by their name. Because they, they may got this or that. Uh, have, do they, is there any evidence in their life? Do they have any degree, any skill, any, any uh, certificate, any training? Jesus just didn't send them out to preach. I'm called to preach. Now I'm going to preach. They spent three years. Night and day, many theologians say equivalent to about three or four doctorates. Wow. Don't be that simple. I did not say don't go to anything outside of Emmanuel. They ain't what I said. I want to be very clear. Many things people doing is great things. But I see people doing marriage conference. You mean how you doing marriage conference? You've been married, you've been married less, less than six months. You ain't been through anything. Even you've been married five years, you make it say something to me, but not probably a lot. You're still in the honeymoon stage. I'm talking about, hey man, she be the apple of your eye when, 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 when things don't look like they was when you're in your 20s. My, you know, I'm trying to get it back there, but I ain't just it's like I used to be. But Dr. Archer, she still, she still grab on to it, hold to it. So you had some 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 spouts, some 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 sleeping on the couch nights. Don't tell me nothing. You ain't never had to sleep on the couch tonight. Can't tell me nothing. Don't, can't you? you ain't never had to sleep on the couch tonight. And you gonna tell me about marriage? Nah. You on now? Nah. See y'all. I'm, I'm going to get mad. I'm, I'm going to end with this. I'm going to end. 
young adults. I love y'all. Young adults, make sure you get this to your friend when I'm ready to say. I love y'all. You read it in the book, baby. You ain't, you ain't lived it yet. Can, can y'all hear me for a second? You try to have your own things, using one another to teach subjects you're not qualified to teach. Just because you got a degree in it and just because you did it for, you, you ain't no expert yet. You're not an SME. You're not a subject matter expert. And then you try, y'all trying to build up each other, make each other look good. And so, not all y'all, in certain fields. So now you're having leadership conference and stuff like that. And you don't even know what leadership is. You ain't never seen the model. You ain't never been leader on no company or nothing. Okay, yeah, you got your own little company. Okay, that you, not a little company, but a company that's, but, but they ain't got the ground yet. You ain't even made you the million dollar status yet. Or 500,000. I'm trying to say something. But you're not y'all gathering, think y'all, you know, you're hurting one another. Then you're looking at people like myself and others who, who can help you get where we're trying to be at. Cause I because I'm where you're trying to be. You have no idea. <laughs> I'm where you trying to be. Dr. A and I, where you trying to be? We can show you how to get there. You despise knowledge. That's why the Bible said, do not despise your elders your teachers they know more than you I learned so much from sitting and talking to Ma, talking to Mama Sally so much amen carrying Dr. Frank Real Franklin uh, uh, a briefcase around as a young person God ain't saying nothing see then, then you, you become wiser beyond your years trying to show off just because you got some new thing. Now, don't impress me. You, you ain't got $5,000 in the bank and you got a $5,000 purse. You ain't impressing me. I hate to go this way, but you're impressing other young people who don't have anything. I love you. That's why we get to form the table that we don't charge. I ain't trying to promote that. Hey, man, some of y'all, and some of you pastors, let me just say, I speak as an apostle now. Some of you pastors, with your, you're being jealous, brother. I ain't trying to get them as a member, but you can't teach them what I teach them. You ain't lived, you ain't lived the experience. And I haven't lived your experience, so some things maybe I can't teach. But I can teach on leadership and per professional and, and, and personal development, because that's what I do. Companies pay me a lot of money to do it. I mix it with God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So now you're hitting your people. And God gonna hold you responsible. You're gonna have to give an account to God. I'll tell you what God told me. I speak as an apostle. You have to give account to God. You see, knowledge is not a competition. Knowledge is not a competition. It's collaboration. I won't go to this. I, I won't go to the second point. I'm out of time. I know how to walk in blessing. Are y'all hearing me? It's about knowledge. I know I am. You got to tell me about Thomas Edison. I know Thomas Edison. I don't wait till black history to learn about me. And I love Thomas Edison, but it wasn't for Lewis Lattimore creating the fulfillment, okay, the filament, okay, to make it, to make it go, you wouldn't have any life. We wait till black history to learn about ourselves or, or some other day to learn about something. No! Embrace knowledge. Embrace who Jesus was. Wasn't no white man with blue eyes. And he wasn't no black man with an afro. Take all those pictures off your wall. Okay. I love you. He was a Safari Jew. With, 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 with hair. Like, like dreads looking like. a Negro or Caucasian. He was a Jew or Hebrew. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't saying that. So give me that, my Muslim brothers. Tell that to somebody who's ignorant. I did too much research. I know. Don't tell me about Moses, Moshe, an African Asian chick. 
him? <laughs> Y'all have no clue what I know. Talk to me like that. Know who I am. Tell me I'm dumb in math. When, when Pythagoras learned it from the Moors, who looked like me, just many pyramids in Ethiopia than in Egypt, because it was once up based in one nation. And not until 1600s did we have any Arabs in Egypt, because the Arabization of, of, of Egypt happened in, the, in 1600, uh, happened in 600 AD. Before then, Nubians were there. Pharaohs at uh, Kaliel. That's just from a secular point of view. But I brought in Bible, so you'll know your Bible is not white. And it's not black. It's for everybody. <laughs> I'm done. The greatest enemy of man, not the devil. Ignorance. Stand to your feet. Father God, we give you glory, we give you honor. Now, God, I said some things that was pretty challenging today. But challenge us in our belief. Challenge us in that great man, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, that died on the Calvary's cross. Crucified. Buried him in a borrowed tomb of Joseph. Got up out the grave on the third day as he promised and declared all power. Heaven and earth is in his hand. Give us knowledge of that guy, that Savior, that Lord Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. And God, we're going to celebrate him. Now, if you're that person and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, as it says in Hebrew, here's an opportunity for you to come to get to know him. Yada. Not just his name, not just some denomination, but who he really is. So you can learn and be delivered and set free to go forward in God and be who God told you to be. We all struggle. We all have pain. We all have some sorrow. We all have ups and downs, but we don't have no bad days, God. Now, God, teach that person. If you're a person that wants Jesus, you was, if you was going to die right now, you wouldn't go to heaven. You'll go to hell because you don't know him. The Bible clearly says in Romans 10 and 9, clearly, if you believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus, and believe that he died and confess in your mouth that he was resurrected, you shall be saved. Shall, I say it again, it's a covenant word. It has to happen. And if you're that person, just repeat, me, repeat after me. Say, Father God, I'm a sinner. And maybe you maybe you praying for somebody who not saved. And you, and you stand in proxy for them. If you are, just repeat after me. Say, Father God, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a sinner. I believe in your son, Jesus. I believe he died and was resurrected on the third day. Father God, come into my heart through the power of your Holy Spirit. Save me. Thank you, Father God, for saving me. Thank you, Father God, for saving me. Put your hands together for those who just got saved. You believe in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. If you have person got saved, if you, want, if you join us by uh, internet or in here either, uh, you can uh, go to our website and uh, follow the website and it'll carry you to the proper uh, place you need to go. Very simple. Uh, and we'll get back with you. Same thing if you want to join this ministry. We are growing. We are believing. Uh, we are trying to affect uh, a nation. We're not trying to be popular. We're trying to be influential. We're not, I'm not trying to be popular. When I post stuff on social media, it's not for my popularity. It's for my influence. I'm trying to influence. Most time I post something, it's with a message. I'm saying something. I'm not trying to be popular. Trying to be influential, okay? That's what God called me to do, first. All right, so uh, so that's what we're trying to do. We launch leaders here at Emmanuel. Um, in, amen. Yeah, there's somebody put me on there. I'm like, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry, I probably went too far today. Um, who, who, who's going to be doing that? Okay, but I, okay I'm sorry. I, I, I implemented it, but I ain't here to do it. So, uh, so uh, anyway, so I probably got to let myself and all that. They're going to talk about that a little bit. And so I won't have to talk about it, so uh, excuse me. But uh, uh, it is Super Sunday. I'm Doc Rock. You join me at the top. Let's receive you.